I've been researching in encyclopedic references um, different calculations on the Jubilee year cycles. Um, and knowing that, you know, you have a sabbatical year, which is seven years, okay? Um, seven times seven is obviously 49. You have 49 times 10, which is 490 years, okay? And we know that seven marks completion, okay? So I did a video previously um, Yeshua and his wife will fulfill Song of Solomon. Um, in simple gematria, uh, if you substitute letters for numbers like A1, B2, M13, Y25, Z26, this totals 490, okay? And we know that we serve an Elohim of order, you know, as proven in 1 Corinthians 14.40, and um, they use English Demetria, Jewish Demetria, and simple Demetria. Well, the 490th chapter, we all know, is Psalm 12. I, I went over this in a previous video. And um, I'm going to read um, Psalm 12, the 490th chapter of the King James Version Bible, knowing that, you know, there are 929 chapters from Genesis 1 to Malachi 4, um, and a total of 1,189 chapters from Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation 22. So it places Psalm 12 as the 490th chapter. And before I go over this, these calculations that point to the year of 2024, um, I am going to read Psalm 12, okay? Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, with our tongue will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, and for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord." I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Okay? Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. So we know that Psalm 12, verse 6, um, it fully correlates with what Solomon wrote in Proverbs 35 through 6, that every word of Elohim is pure, okay? The words of the Lord are pure words. You have a total of 31,102 scripture verses from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21 in the King James Version Bible. You have 23,145 verses um, from Genesis 1 1 to the very last verse of Malachi 4. And you have a total of 7,957 verses from Matthew 1 1 to Revelation 22 21. For a, a, a total within the King James Version Bible, 31,102. Um, and every word of every verse in the KJV Bible is pure, okay? Do not add to his words or take away from his words, lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar. Okay? The five wise virgins who do go out to meet the groom and the bride, they know uh, that their lamps are full of oil of the Holy Spirit um, in alignment with Psalm 119, 105. Okay? The Spirit of Truth, mentioned as a he and a himself seven times in John 16, 13 alone. In the same chapter, an actual woman... Uh, in labor is referred to as a she and a her, okay? Uh, the Holy Spirit of 1 John 5, 6, who is referred to as the Holy Ghost in 1 John 5, 7, is the spirit of truth, okay? And so, you know, I've, I've, I, you know, I have told people before, look, you know, if it's not scriptural, if it's not in alignment with 2 Timothy 3 um, or Proverbs 35 through 6, 
they are in danger of preaching a false doctrine. You know, what John warned about in 2 John chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. Okay. And so, you know, I pray for people. We see through a dark glass dimly, but, you know, if they want to fall in a bottomless pit, you know, and get left behind for preaching a false doctrine, you know, um, that's their problem. Okay. The real bride would not go against the infallible word of Elohim. Okay. And so, um, yeah, let's get to the point. So what he showed me, um, we know that from 1446 BC to 1406 BC, the Jewish people wandered in the wilderness from Egypt into the promised land of Israel um, for 40 years. They could have wandered in that wilderness for a year or even a year and a half, but they didn't. They wandered in that wilderness for 40 whopping years, okay? Um, and so it's a foreshadow of the bride, I believe, being at least 40 years of age, if not older, um, because, you know, she's been in the wilderness of this planet for um, a minimum of 40 years, I believe, um, because Yeshua put on my heart years ago that the bride has to be at least 40 years of age. She's been through fiery trials, you know, and so um, so according to many encyclopedic references, um the Exodus, the 40 years of wandering was from 1446 BC to 1406 BC. Now, you know, you have, um, you have seven sabbatical years. Okay. Leviticus 25. Okay. So Leviticus 25, I'm going to read, um, the specific verses out of Leviticus 25 and then read the original parable of the 10 virgins of Matthew 25. Okay. And according to Leviticus 25, you have seven sets of seven. Okay. And then that would be obviously 49 years and the 50th year would be the year of Jubilee. Okay. Well, if you take 49 years times 10, 10 means completeness of order, you get 490. Okay. And 490 points to Psalm 12, okay, um, which we know was written by King David, the father of Solomon, okay? And um, King David writes um, in the 490th chapter of the KJV Bible, uh, the words of the Lord are pure words, okay? Exactly what his son Solomon wrote in Proverbs 35 through 6. And so the 490th chapter... It talks about, um, it talks about him cutting off the wicked. Okay, um, bear with me one second. Um, okay, for the godly man ceaseth; for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips. Verse three. Okay, and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Um, and so in order for him to do that, you know, we have to be at the very last day of the age of grace, you know, when he breaks out of the clouds in power and great glory. So we know that Psalm 12 written by King David, um, it can only be completely fulfilled when the rapture occurs. Okay, and so the 490... Um, yeah, 49 times 10 um, is 490. It points to Psalm 12, the 490th chapter of the KJV Bible. When you take seven 490-year cycles, you obviously get 3,430 years. Um, according to Wikipedia, which Wikipedia you have to be careful with, but with, with this specific article, and I'll link um, this Wikipedia page in the description box, Wikipedia, I do believe, is accurate um, when saying that 1406 is the first year of the first Jubilee cycle, okay? From 1406 BC to 2024 AD, 3,430 years, okay? Then if you add one to the final Jubilee, you come to 2025. Matthew 25 speaks of the five wise who will understand Okay, the wicked shall do wickedly, but none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand, according to Daniel 12. Okay, so we know that Leviticus 25, okay, 
speaks of the Jubilee year cycles, okay? Um, my question is this, knowing that August 21, 2017, there was a great American solar eclipse that crossed all over the entire United States of America. Then on April 8 of 2024, next year, there will be a great American solar eclipse, and these two eclipses will cross over Carbondale, Illinois, forming an X. And it points directly to Revelation 18, 8 through 10 judgments, for in one hour her judgment will come. This will be when uh, Medo-Persia, Iran, will bomb North American soil, fulfilling Isaiah 13, 17 through 19 judgments. And that will cause the destructive mountain of Jeremiah 51, 25 to erupt, fulfilling Jeremiah 51, 25. Um, and it will, the death toll will be astronomically high. Um, really, it will be. And so I never carve a year in stone, okay? I never do. But from 1406 BC to 2024 AD, 3,430 years. Then if you add one, you come to 2025. I question if this is the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh, you know, time is running out. And if, if people are preaching a false doctrine lying about the gender of the Holy Spirit, okay, accusing or insinuating that Yohanan wrote the wrong gender in John chapter 16, uh, you're running out of time, people, okay? You are running out of time, okay? Uh, we know that Elohim, according to scripture, is three and one, not four and one, okay? And, um, you know, if, 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 if the heavenly family is four and one, why didn't John write it in 1 John 5, 6, and 7? Okay. It's clear the Holy Spirit in 1 John 5, 6 is the same as the Holy Ghost in 1 John 5, 7. Okay. If wisdom in Proverbs 8, which I will say this loud and clear, um, I've talked with my parents, I've talked with family members. You know, if wisdom is not personified in Proverbs 8, you know, the way. Solomon wrote Proverbs 9, we know that wisdom did not all by herself carve out seven pillars, you know, and build part of the holy city of the New Jerusalem all by herself. We know she didn't work in a slaughterhouse killing animals, you know, to prepare a steak dinner for the marriage supper of the lamb celebration. Women don't do that. <laughs> I don't care if you're a goddess or a god or not, you know, um, Wisdom, according to Proverbs 9, obviously is personified. I realize there's a hang-up with wisdom in Proverbs 8. Was wisdom there with Adonai Elohim, okay, when they built the earth, okay? I don't know. I can't say yay or nay, but I can only go by scripture at this point, okay? I am not going to be in violation of 2 John chapter 1, verse 9 through 11 and jump into the bottomless pit, Okay, yes, there is a sin called blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, okay, and denying him, okay, um, obviously will land you straight in the bottomless pit, okay, and, and many are heading there, okay, but at the same time, the bride in Matthew 25, 1, she is the same bride in Revelation 18, 23, the bridegroom who has the bride with him in Revelation 18, 23. You know, the bride is repenting from sins and iniquities mentioned in Revelation 18, 4 and 5, okay? The same bridegroom and bride are mentioned in Jeremiah 7, 34, okay? Um, the sins and iniquities in Revelation 18, 4 and 5 point to queen of heaven idolatry that provokes Elohim to anger outlined in Jeremiah 7, 18 through 20. Okay, she's not going to go against these scriptures. It says in Psalm 45, 11 that she will worship her Lord. Okay, um, you know, it doesn't say anywhere about the king and the queen being worshipped. Okay, um, but yes, we see through a dark glass dimly. Okay, if wisdom was there with Elohim, why didn't John write about it in 1 John 5, 6, and 7? Okay, that's my question. If you want to jump in a bottomless pit with all the other uh, queen of heaven idolaters only under a different disguise, okay, you've got queen of heaven idolatry in the Roman Catholic Church, okay, Miriam does not want to be prayed to. Miriam is crying. Uh, I have a track that was given to me back in 2010 when my daughter and I left the Catholic Church, Okay, my grandmother gave me this track. Why is Mary crying? 
Okay, Miriam, yes, she is the mother of Yeshua HaMashiach, but she does not want to be worshipped or prayed to. Okay, and so, you know, if people want to, if people think that God the mother, um, there has to be a female member of Elohim, okay, uh, we see through a dark glass dimly, but I am not going to hell for any form of queen of heaven idolatry. I'm not going to deny it, but I'm just going to say, you know, um, if wisdom was in fact there with an Elohim, with Abba Father, Yeshua HaMashiach, and the spirit of truth, okay? If she was there when they built the earth, according to Proverbs 8, okay, fine. But why didn't John write about four members of Elohim in 1 John 5, 6, and 7. Why? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it. it we see through a dark glass dimly, okay? Yes, there is a heavenly family. And according to scripture, which is the sword of the spirit, okay? According to Ephesians 6, 16, and 17, Elohim is three in one, okay? Um, there's a fine line between queen of heaven idolatry and, you know, um, um, God the mother, okay? There, there, there There's... You know, you either go to hell, um, and I realize there are people that believe in, in God the Mother, and they don't want to deny her, and, and they've said in comment sections before that they don't want to go to hell for denying uh, their mother God, but where is she at in scripture, okay? Where? You know, if Ephesians 6, 16, and 17, Psalm 119, 105 um, you know, if, if they, if these scriptures were written differently, I can understand their point, but at the same time, I am not going to hell for any form of queen of heaven idolatry. I'm just not going to do that. Okay. That's just not my thing. No, I, I will not go to hell for anyone. No, no, no. Because, you know, my grandmother came out of the Catholic church in 1974. My daughter and I came out of the Roman Catholic church in 2010. We are not going back to any form of queen of heaven idolatry. The bride mentioned in Matthew 25, 1 is the same bride mentioned in Jeremiah 7, 34 and Revelation 18, 23. She wouldn't go against the scriptures in Revelation 18, 4 and 5 or in Jeremiah 7, 16 through 20. She wouldn't do that. The sons of Korah would have written Psalm 45 differently, you know, specifically with verse 11. She will worship her Lord. It doesn't say the two of them will be worshipped. It says that she will worship her Lord, okay? And so that that's what I have to say. Um, and so, yeah, we're running out of time. Really, we are. Um, you know, the fact remains is this. If you count 1406 BC, which was the year Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out the 12 spies to scope out the promised land, the Jewish people, they were the size of grasshoppers compared to the Nephilim giants, okay, who did not have clean double helix DNA. They were not completely human. They were descendants from fallen angels, okay? And um, you can read all about that in the book of Joshua, um, 1406, this was the year that Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out the 12 spies, okay? If that counts as year one, then 3,430 years later, lands in 2024 AD, okay? You know, will he, will he cut off all flattering lips in 2024 or 2025, okay? Because we know that um, 70 years from 1948 lands in 2018, okay, uh, 5708 to 5778, 1948 to 2018, um, you know, 2018 and 2019 was marked by a blood moon uh, triad, you know, in January of 2018, July of 2018, and January of 2019, uh, there were three blood moons marking 70 years from 1948, you know, 2028, is the end okay? I I don't I can't carve it in stone and say he is definitely going to come back between 2024 and 2028. But we have to consider when are the 42 months that the anti Messiah will continue for? Okay, you know what I'm saying. So you know I'm going to go ahead and read the original parable of the ten virgins and then the specific verses in Leviticus 23 or not Leviticus 23, Leviticus 25, which talks about the jubilee year cycles. 
Then the kingdom of heaven will be compared to ten virgins. The same took their lamps and went to meet the groom and the bride. But five of them were wise and five were foolish. And those fools took their lamps and did not take oil with them. But those wise ones took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But when the groom delayed, all of them grew tired and slept. And in the middle of the night... There was an outcry, Behold, the groom has come, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. The fool said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, behold, our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered and said, Why, there is not enough for us and for you. Go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And when they went to buy, the groom came, and those who were ready entered with him into the wedding place, and the door was barred. But afterward, those other virgins came, and they were saying, Our Lord, our Lord, open to us. But he answered and said to them, Amen, I say to you that I do not know you. Wake up, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. And so next I'm going to read from the King James Version Bible, Leviticus 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy seed, thy, thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land, and the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for thee and for thy servant and for thy maid and for thy hired servant and for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee and for thy cattle and for the beast that are in thy land shall all the increase thereof be meat, the fiftieth year jubilee. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you, ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. In the year of this jubilee, ye shall return every man unto his possession. And if thou, sh and if thou sell aught unto thy neighbor, or buyest aught of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another." According to the number of years after the jubilee, thou shalt buy of thy neighbor, and according unto the number of years of the fruits, he shall sell unto thee. According to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof, and according to the um, fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price of it. For according to the number of the years of the fruits doth he sell unto thee. Ye shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear thy God, for I am the Lord your God. Okay. Verse 18. The land shall yield her fruit. Wherefore, ye shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land in safety. Um and the land shall yield her fruit, and ye shall eat your fill and dwell therein in safety. And if ye shall say, What shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow, nor gather in our increase. 
Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. And ye shall sow the eighth year, and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year, until her fruits come, and ye shall eat of the old store." Okay, the redemption of the land. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. Okay, for ye are strangers and sojourners with me, and in all the land of your possession ye shall grant a redemption for the land. If thy brother be waxen poor and hath sold away some of his possession, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. And if the man have none to redeem it, and himself be able to redeem it, then let him count the years of the sale thereof, and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it, that he may return unto his possession. But if he be not able to restore it to him, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that hath bought it until the year of Jubilee, and in the Jubilee it shall go out, and he shall return unto his possession. And if a man sell a dwelling house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold. Within a full year may he redeem it. And if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the walled city shall be established forever to him that bought it, Throughout his generations, it shall not go out in the Jubilee, but the houses of the villages which have no wall round about them shall be counted as the fields of the country. They may be redeemed, and they shall go out in the Jubilee, notwithstanding the cities of the Levites and the houses of the cities of their possession may the Levites redeem at any time. And if a man purchase of the Levites, then the house that was sold and the city of his possession shall go out in the year of Jubilee, for the houses of the cities of the Levites are their possession among the children of Israel. But the field of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. Okay, so I'm running out of time. Um, this has been 27 minutes and I have a maximum of 28 and a half minutes. Um, you know, um, I encourage you to read the rest of Leviticus 25 all the way to the last verse of 55. Um, but, you know, really, and I'm going to take a picture of this chart and post it on my community page. Um, really, I don't think this is a coincidence. 1446 BC to 1406 BC, 40 years of the Jewish people wandering in the wilderness out of Egypt into the promised land. Okay. Um, you know, and we know that 1406 was year one. And, um, you know, from 1406 to 2024 AD, 3,430 years. 49 um, times 10 is 490 years. Okay. And when you take seven 490 year cycles, you get 3,430 years. Um, other um, scholars and theologians have used this 3430 um, and the 3431. Okay. If you add the one to 2024, you come to 2025. Okay. Is this a coincidence? I don't think so. Not when the X marks over Carbondale, Illinois in 2024, you know. I hope this message blesses you and I hope we fly home soon. Shalom.